All right, so this is one of my biggest um, gripes with the quantic, the current quantum physics. Um, the more I see it, the more it kind of pisses me off, honestly, because um, one of the biggest problems with quantum physics is it uses probability to explain why things happen and what is more favorable, but more likely is not a satisfactory explanation for why. Uncertainty is also not a valid justification. To be clear, uncertainty and probability only make sense and have context to us. Reality doesn't care if it is probable or certain. It does what is simplest at any given time. What we do and don't know changes nothing. They are approximations, you know, being probability and uncertainty. These are approximations and they work, but saying someone will buy a coffee because they usually buy coffee is not a true answer to the question, right? So if you ask someone, why do you buy, why do they buy coffee? And you say, oh, well, they are like, why did they buy a coffee today, right? And you say, oh, well, they always buy coffee. Did that really answer your question? No. Is it wrong? No. It's a correct answer. It's going to work in most scenarios. Well, why do they buy the coffee today? Because they always buy a coffee today. That's just what they do. But it does not answer the reasoning why. Why do they buy a coffee every day? Because they want to make sure they don't fall asleep on their drive home, right? So they drink an extra dose of caffeine before they leave. That is more of an explanation. And we, what would happen is, is it was revolutionary and it was genius for the time, but it was a patch job. And patch jobs are not meant to be permanent, right? So saying, oh, well, why does this happen? Oh, well, it's because we can't actually know its position and its momentum with certainty at one time. So because of that, this happens. That doesn't make any sense right? It puts us in the center focus. It puts us at this important point. We are the controllers of the laws of reality, and that is not backed by anything. There is no backing to that logic. The only backing that has is our own observing, and people go back to things like the double slit experiment, which says, oh, you know, the observer changes everything. It's that's not what's happening there. And you ask, and if you ask most physicists, they will tell you the same thing if they understand what's going on. And if they tell you, no, it's the observer that has the power, they don't understand physics, all right? Um, we have no power over what's happening. That doesn't, that, that's not how this works because we're not outside of, of what's going on here. If you really think about it, the difference between my eyeball seeing that wall and the wall seeing that wall is zero. My eye absorbs the light and that wall absorbs the light. My eye reflects light, that wall reflects light. There is no physical difference between that interaction. So how that wall appears is not affected by me. If I walk away and this... I think I had it as a separate talk, but you know, Einstein, like one of Einstein's things is that people have this, you know, he's, he has like this quote, like, do you really believe the earth is not there when you're not looking? And, you know, there are some people that might argue, well, uh, you know, I heard like someone say like in a video, I don't know if anyone actually responded to Einstein with this, but you can't prove it is right. You can't prove it is there. Right. Um, because you have to look to know. But here's the thing, you don't have to look to know because, you know, think about this. You're in, you're in night. You cannot see the sun. Does that mean it doesn't exist? And if you say, well, we don't know for sure, well, we can see the moon, right? And the moon reflects the sun's light. So if the moon is reflecting the sun's light, that means the sun is there even though you can't see it. And you can say, oh, well, that's because you're observing it from the reflection. I disagree. I strongly disagree that seeing physical interactions 
prove like because with that logic <laughs> with that logic everything is affected by everything so if that's the case then everything is being observed by everything all the time so your observer thing goes out the window it doesn't make any sense once again you come back to the point that we are not actually observers we think we're observers but everything is observing there is no difference between us and the wall there is no between no difference between us and the dirt there's no thing no difference between the moon seeing the sun and us seeing the moon there is there, there's no difference there and I feel like I've gone on a tie right here and I'm totally off track. Um, no, I'm, I, I said everything, so I, I, I'm good. <laughs> but my gripe is that when you say, well, light takes the path, the shortest path because that is the more probabilistic path, right? You've explained nothing. Saying it does that because that's what it does is effectively what the is effectively what quantum mechanics is. <laughs> it's basically just saying, well, that's what it does. You know, light does that. So, you know, that's that's why that's why that's what it is. Right. Well, there's no actual explanation for why. We've created a formula that works to give us predicted res to, to give us correct results but it doesn't actually tell us why there is no there's no logic behind it they glossed over the reasoning and said listen we're just going to approximate one and call it a day right um and i just i don't like that and i don't understand why everyone just kind of ignores that <laughs> ignores that like um like it's no big deal that we don't understand why like probability and it being more probabilistic and the more likely path is a good justification for anything it's not like i i don't understand why everyone just says well you know when you like like calculating the path of light like you gotta add up every, it goes in every direction so you gotta add up all the arrows and they kind of um cancel out and then you end up with the lines that have just so happen to be in the path that it goes whoa oh uh, that, that 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 whole that whole calculation thing was pointless because it's basically just all it does is it's a long roundabout way of saying it just does that because it doesn't actually prove a why to anything because probability is not an explanation. And I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but it is, it is it's a fundamental flaw with, with the theory. The equation works, but the theory makes no sense, right? It works, but it doesn't explain, it doesn't explain. <laughs> it pretends to explain it has a reasoning, but it doesn't actually give you an answer as to why. Um, and I, I think my theory does a lot better job of explaining why things happen. And that's why I'm kind of doing this because at the end of the day, at the very least, I want people to be aware that our answer is not good enough. <laughs> saying it is because it is is not good enough you know at least like at least try <laughs> you know at least try um and so yeah uh that was my little rant <laughs> so peace out